Now, the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California presents... Suspense! Tonight, Roma Wines bring you Mr. Lloyd Nolan as star of Murder for Myra, a suspense play produced, edited, and directed for Roma Wines by William Spear. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live, to your happiness and entertaining guests, to your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now a glassful would be very pleasant, as Roma Wines bring you Lloyd Nolan in a remarkable tale of... Suspense! on the bus for Hollywoodland. Myra had said... Take the last bus, Ernie. That'll get you to the house at about 1.30, and I'll see to it that His Highness and I don't get home from the party until after 2. That ought to give you plenty of time to get set. Well, I had taken the last bus, and it was 1.10, and we were coming to Beechwood Drive. Don't ride all the way. Get off at Beechwood and Franklin and walk up just in case. I pulled the cord. I was following Myra's instruction to the letter. It was raining harder than ever when I got off the bus. I turned up my coat collar and started up the hill. It was four blocks to the house. When I got to Midway, I stopped under a tree. I was soaked to the skin. Then I saw the headlights of a car coming down the hill. I ducked behind the tree. When it had passed, I struck out again. The house was dark. I walked up the driveway to the rear. Go in through the kitchen door. I'll leave it unlocked. I tried the door. It opened. I stepped in. I stood still, listening for sound. Then I closed the door. Don't turn on the light. Remember now. Then look for the lipstick on the table. I struck a match. The lipstick was on the table. The lipstick meant that the way was clear for me to go upstairs. The match went out, and I stuck the burnt end in my pocket. There was a puddle of water on the floor where I'd been standing. I got a kitchen towel and wiped it up. Then I wrung out the bottom of my trousers and wiped the floor again. I took off my coat and went to the sink and wrung out my coat, too. I looked at my watch. It was 1.55. Didn't have any too much time. Myra and the old man would be returning any minute now. So I walked into the next room. It was the dining room. The door on the other side of the room was open. Led into the hall. I could see the stairs. I walked into the hall and started upstairs. And the match went out. When I got to the top, I lit another. Our bedroom's the first door on your right. I opened the door. Saw the twin beds. I'll keep him late at the party. So that by the time we get home, he ought to be pretty knocked out and fall asleep in no time. He'll have been up since 6 a.m. And there was the clothes closet. I opened the closet door and stepped in. You'll find the hammer on the top shelf. I'll hide it behind some old hats of mine. I was groping for the hammer when I heard a car turning into the driveway. My first impulse was to run to get out of the house now that the time had come out. I was afraid. I was deathly afraid. I started for the door and... You've got to go through with it, darling. It's the only way. It's his life or mine. Don't you see? If you love me, you'll do it. I took hold of myself. I stepped back into the closet and closed the door. recalled thinking. This can't be me. Ernest Cobb hiding in the dark with a hammer in my hand waiting to kill a man I don't know. A man I've never even seen. Waiting to murder him in his sleep. This must be somebody else. For suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you as star Lloyd Nolan in Murder for Myra by Lee Horton and Paul Bernard. 
Roma Wine's presentation tonight in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Elsa Maxwell's ideas on gracious entertaining are followed by women all over America. The other day she said this about Roma wine. One of my favorite wines is distinguished Roma California Sherry, a glorious gold and amber wine, delightfully light and nut-like in taste. Roma Sherry is ideal for any occasion, before dinner with appetizers or during the friendly evening hours. Yes, good Roma Sherry, like all Roma wines, is always unvaryingly good. The goodness of carefully selected grapes, brought to perfection in California's choicest vineyards, gently pressed, then, unhurriedly, guided to flavor richness by Roma's ancient winemaking skill. Yet all this goodness is yours for only pennies a glass. Remember, because of uniformly fine quality at reasonable cost, more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. And now Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Lloyd Nolan in Murder for Myra, a narrative well calculated to keep you in suspense. I stood in the closet and waited. I could hear voices outside in the driveway and the slam of a car door. The hangers loaded with clothes are poking me in the back, tipping me off balance. I was standing on a pair of man's shoes. His shoes. I kicked the shoes out of the way and shoved some of the hangers back and closer together. I listened. for some sound from below. But everything was quiet again. And then I remembered... Myra saying that they shared the driveway with the folks next door. I put down the hammer. It must have been the neighbors coming home. I opened the closet door and stepped out. Still a little time yet. In the darkness, I noticed that Myra had left one of the windows open. It was raining in. I crossed the room, closed it. There was a nightstand by each bed and an alarm clock on one of them. I never heard a clock that made so much noise, just ticking. It was cold and damp, and I was shaking from head to foot. I couldn't tell whether it was from the cold or from fear. I sat down on the edge of one of the beds. And then I... I decided to have another look at the hammer. In a few minutes, I was going to have to use that hammer. It's a big, heavy one, Ernie. It'll do the trick all right. I felt along the floor of the closet for the hammer. Then I hefted it experimentally. It was big and heavy. The kind that would smash a human skull to pulp. I looked at clothes hanging there, many of them his clothes. In the flickering light of the match, one garment caught my eye, probably because it was long and white and had big gaudy flowers on it. It was Myra's negligee. She'd been wearing it that morning when I first met her five months ago. <laughs> Hello. What can I do for you? Oh, good morning. I, I hope you'll excuse me for bothering. You see, I'm taking a poll of homeowners. What kind of poll? Well, it, it has to do with your post-war plans. <laughs> I don't have any. My husband does the planning in this family. I just go along for the ride. Oh, I see. Well, uh, still, if you're, if you're not too busy, I would like to ask you a few questions. Why not? I'm just sitting around twiddling my thumbs. Come on in. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> it's a... Beautiful day outside, isn't it? Is it? I hadn't noticed. I sat down on the sofa and opened my portfolio. I felt ill at ease. 
bare emotions do that to me. And Myra's emotions that morning were as bare as... as a throat in that low-cut negligee. I knew right away that she'd had a row with her old man. In my business, you get so you can figure out things like that. And it was as plain as the nose on my face. My nose was pretty obvious that day. I'd been to the beach and I was burned to a fiery red and my nose was peeling. She laughed then. At me, I guess. <laughs> you got quite a case of sunburn, Mr... Cobb. Ernest Cobb. Yes, I have, haven't I? That's too much beach, I guess. I haven't been to the beach in two years. Oh, don't you like it? Sure, but what difference does that make? His Highness doesn't. His... who? My husband. Let's have the quiz. Oh, Yeah. Yes, of course. Now, first, your name is... Blair. Myra Blair. His name is Ray. And, uh, and his business? He's an aircraft engineer. A scientist. Uh, and, uh, you, you... You don't work? No, no, I'm just the housewife. The little homemaker. Well, you, you don't sound as though you fancy the role, Mrs. Blair. I hate and despise it. No, oh, that, that's a shame. Uh, any children? Yes, a daughter of four named Julie. She's at nursery school. And now for the questionnaire. Are you plan? Uh, I, I mean, do you know whether or not your husband is planning any extensive repairs or remodeling on your home after the war? I haven't the foggiest notion. It's like I told you, I'm part of the decorations here. What I think and how I feel doesn't count. Oh. I suppose you think I'm talking out of turn. Well, I am. I'm sick and tired of the whole mess. He comes home and smokes his filthy pipes and tinkers around his workshop down in the cellar, and I just sit here. Night after night, it's the same thing. Look at me. Am I so hard to take? Well, he, he's probably just got his mind on other yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, I know. Planes, planes, planes. That's all I hear. That's the war, Mrs. Blair. He's, he's fooey. Pro- the same before the war started. I'm not getting any younger. I want to have some fun. Do you blame me? But No, no. I, I think everyone's entitled to some fun and good times, Mrs. Blair. Call me Myra. I never did like being called Mrs. Blair. About the questionnaire. Now, perhaps you can answer uh, me... Ah, fooey to the questionnaire. I'm sorry. I'm just in a nasty mood, that's all. I I had a fight with him last night and another one this morning. I had to blow my top to someone. You just happen to be it. Oh, that's all right. About your questions, honestly, I don't have the answers. It's like I said. Sunburn of yours, you... You better do something about it. Well, it does burn pretty much all right. My hands are cold. Does this feel good? She bent out over me, and I could feel a breath in my ear. One lock of her hair fell away from her forehead, and it brushed my nose. Then her fingers touched my face, and I did something crazy. I reached up and grabbed her by the shoulders and kissed her on the mouth. And and the next thing I knew, she was in my arms. She was kissing me and sobbing in a sort of a spilling over of emotions that left me scared and limp as a dish rag. Oh, there, there, that's... You're going to change things, aren't you, big boy? Oh, sure. You'll help me? Sure. Sure, I'd, I'd do anything for you. Anything. The match went out. The negligee merged back into the other clothes there. I stuffed the hammer back into the corner and came out into the room again to wait for Myra and his highness to come home from the party. His highness. He's unbearable, Ernie. Every time he puts his filthy paws on me, I go all raw inside. No matter what we did or where we went, he was always there in her mind. We had another fight this morning, Ernie. Do you want me to show you the black and blue marks? And then one night when we were having dinner, it all spilled out. There's only one answer, Ernie. I got to get rid of him. Well, that's what I've been saying all along. You've got to divorce him. No, Ernie. That isn't what I mean. Well, then what... I mean I'm going to have to do away with him. Myra. What? You're out of your mind. You don't know what you're saying. Oh, yes, I do. I thought it all out. Myra. Don't say such a thing. Don't even think it. What you're suggesting is murder. Murder, Ernie. That's right. Murder. 
Didn't sleep that night. And yet, worried as I was, that the idea didn't seem real to me. Murder. It was something you read about, something for gangsters and madmen to traffic in. It wasn't a thing that could touch me, Ernest Cobb, or Myron. She didn't say anything about that. The next time we were together, I thought she'd come to her senses. She'd just been upset. And then one night, we went rowing in Westlake Park. He's bought a gun. He's threatened to kill me. He wouldn't dare. It's him or me, Ernie. I gotta get rid of him. Well, get rid of him, yes, but not the way... What other way is there? I don't know, but... What other way is there? Name it. Well, how are you going to do it, Myra? I'm gonna poison him. You'll help me, won't you? No, I, I couldn't. I'm not asking you to feed it to him. You can help me get a little poison, can't you? I... I don't know anything about poisons. I don't know anything about murder. Well, you can learn, can't you? If you're that dumb, maybe I can find someone else. Myra. There are others who'd be glad to help. Please, don't talk like that, Myra. Well. Well, you, you know I'd do anything for you. I just... I... There's a better way, Ernie. What? He's got a big, heavy hammer down in his workshop, yeah. Ernie. You could do the trick easy. Oh, no, no, Myra, not me. I'd, I'd do anything in the world for you, Myra. Anything, but... but... the one thing that'd help me out of this mess. It's his life or mine, Ernie. If you love me, you'd do it. I can't do that. I can't. You'd I leave can... it for me to do. No, no, It'd I... It'd be I... a cinch, Ernie. You could sneak into the house some night when we were out and hide until we get home. With that hammer, it'd be all over in a second. And then we'd say a burglar came no, and... No, Myra, no. Oh, you I... don't love me, really. It's all just talk. No, no, it isn't. You, you, you know better than that. I worship you, Myra. I couldn't live without Ernie, you. Ernie, if you, know... you want me, you've got to do it. You've got to, Ernie. All right, Myra. I... I suppose I knew I'd have to. It, it's just a little hard to get used to the idea, that's all. But I'll, I'll do it. I looked at my watch. It was ten past two. I would be home soon. I lost my nerve once and started downstairs, and someone walked past the house. That's all. Just walked past the house. I ran back up into that bedroom with my heart pounding so that. It drowned out the sound of the clock. Then the headlights of a car flashed across the wall. A car that was turning into their driveway. There was no mistaking it this time. This was it. I could hear the voices of a man and a woman. The woman's voice was Myra's. I slam up a car door. Footsteps on the cement driveway. I eased back into the closet once more. Felt for the hammer on the floor and closed the door. All but a little crack. Then I heard the front door open and close. Somebody walking upstairs. Come on, Julie, wake up. Oh, wake up, oh, darling. Come on. I've got to get undressed. Go to bed. It was Myra. The kid was asleep and she was carrying her. That's the girl. That's the girl. Stand up. That's it. Turn around, darling, so Mommy can unbutton your dress. There. Now you go in your own room, dear. Take off your shoes. Mommy will be right in. I heard her walking toward the closet. Ernie. Ernie, are you there? Yes. I knew she was standing there, but I couldn't see her. I groped for her in the darkness. My hand touched her shoulder, and then she was in my arms, her body pressed against mine, and I was kissing her. Did you find the hammer? Oh, my, her I, I Did knew. you find the hammer? Yeah, the, the, the hammer, yes. He's putting up the car. He'll be up in a minute. My right, I, it's all off. I can't do it. You've got to. I can't. I can't do it. Ernie, listen to me. I can't. I tell you, Shut I can't. Shut up and listen to me. Ernie, you say you love me. Oh, you know I do. I worship you. You want me, don't you? More than anything in the world. All right, then. If you want me, you got to do it. But Mommy! I... Mommy! C C coming, darling. Quick, Ernie, you'll do it. I'll do it. Of course I'll do it. I knew you would. Mommy! She kissed me and closed the door. And then I heard him coming upstairs. He came into the room and switched on the light. I heard him moving around. I figured he was undressing and getting ready for bed. Well, is she 
she asleep? She will be in a minute. Well, that kid isn't getting enough sleep, Myra. Now, don't start that again, please. Where are you going? Oh, the clothes closet to get my pajamas. Why? I felt my breath. I, I'll get them for you. I flattened myself against the wall. She opened the door, reached for the pajamas. Her eyes met for an instant, and she was gone. The door closed. Here. Here you are. Well, thanks. What are you hiding in there? What, what do you mean, hiding? Well, the way you made a dive for that door, oh, I thought... Oh, nuts. That... What would I be hiding? Well, I don't know. I just said... What, what are you doing? Say, what's the matter with you tonight, Myra? There's nothing the matter with me. Why? Oh, you're so jumpy. Well, can't I ask you what you're doing? Fooling with the clock? Sure, but why jump out of your skin? I'm just setting the alarm. It's all already set. I'm setting it ahead for four o'clock. Why? Because I got to be at the plant at five this morning. We got a, I got a trial run. Oh. This was something we hadn't figured on. I looked at my watch. Well, it's, it's three now. You, you won't get much sleep. I know it, but I can't help it. Don't, don't put the clock on my table. Put it on your side where it always is. Oh, okay, if it's so important. Hey, how did all this water get on the floor here? Through, through the window, I suppose. No, but it's closed. Uh, I closed it when I came up. We, we, we left it open. Oh. Well, if you're, if you're getting up at four, you better get to sleep, don't you think? Oh, I guess so. I heard them get into bed. Well, <laughs> good night. Good night, Mara. The stage was set. I breathed easy. Now, I'd only have to wait for him to... Then the thought struck me. Suppose he doesn't fall asleep right away. Suppose he doesn't fall asleep at all. He isn't so tired. Even if it is late. He doesn't sound knocked out to me. And before he can get to sleep, then the alarm will go off and he... I looked at my watch. It was exactly five minutes past three. Eh, this will never do. I thought I gotta get a hold of myself. I've got nearly an hour yet, and in that time, he ought to... I listened. I couldn't hear a sound. Was he asleep? He might be, but I didn't know. I had to be sure. I'd wait half an hour. And if I didn't hear anything by then, I could be pretty certain he was. The minutes dragged on, and I listened. When the half hour was up and I hadn't heard a sound, I sat down on the floor, took off my shoes, and I picked up the hammer and turned the doorknob. I turned it very slowly. It made no sound. Then I opened the door and stepped into the room. Who? Oh. Who's there? Who's there? Daddy, I want to drink water. Oh. Oh, it's you. All right, baby, just a minute. What? What's the matter? Oh, it's the kid. She wants to drink water. Oh, no. No, don't get up. Don't get up, Ray. Go back to sleep. I'll get it. I stepped back into the closed closet and closed the door. I felt the blood drain from my head. I leaned against the wall. I heard Myra go into the kid's room. And then I slid to the floor. I guess I must have passed out then, or fainted or something. Because the next thing I remembered was sitting up, startled, wondering where I was. I looked at my watch. It was three minutes to four. I remembered now where I was and what I was there for. I was in the closet. There was a man on the other side of the door that I had to kill before an alarm went off. And the alarm went off at four. I remember that I had to be very quiet because the man was asleep. Everything I did from that time on was automatic. I acted like a man in a dream. I picked up the hammer and stood up. I opened the door and crept into the room. I could see the hands of the clock by his bed. It was almost four. I didn't breathe. I 
reached the headboard. Now, I was standing over him. I raised the hammer over my head and swung down. And I hit him again and again and again. And then I yelled, Myra, Myra, turn it off, will you? Turn the alarm. The tape. Myra, over the corner. And then the light went on. And I was looking at a man sitting up in the other bed. And he was pointing a gun at me. Hello, Ernie. I moved the clock. You saved me a lot of trouble. I looked down at the bed I was standing over. And I saw Myra. And blood. And the hammer. <laughs> and suddenly I felt an insane desire to live. And then a, a sob caught in my throat. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't control myself. <laughs> I, I started to laugh. I couldn't stop. Roma Wines have brought you Lloyd Nolan as star of Murder for Myra. Tonight's study in Suspense. This is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines, the sponsor of Suspense. August, one of the warmest months, calls for tall, frosty, iced drinks. And famous hostess Elsa Maxwell recently said, I've discovered the perfect hot weather drink. Wonderfully cooling and refreshing. One that guests really go for. I mean, Roma Wine and Soda. Made with distinguished Roma, California Burgundy, or Sautern. Yes, Roma Wine and Soda is simple to prepare. Half fill tall glasses with Roma Burgundy or Sautern. Add ice cubes, sparkling water, and a bit of sugar. And for a decorative touch, garnish with cherries or fruit. And be sure to use Roma wine, always uniformly good, yet costs only pennies a glass, so you can serve it often. And next time you use vermouth, choose Roma vermouth, sweet or dry. Zestful, full-flavored Roma vermouth is blended and developed with all the traditional winemaking skill of Roma wineries, is made and bottled in the heart of California's famous vineyards, yet surprisingly low-priced. Try Roma Vermouth soon, won't you? Lloyd Nolan appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox and will soon be seen in their production, Captain Eddie. Next Thursday, three of radio's most distinguished actors whom you have heard often in this series will be stars of Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. Presented by Roma Wines, R-O-M-A. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.